Hello and welcome to the final of the Zwift Games. I'm Jez Cox. I'm John Mould. And yesterday it was the men's finale and today it's the women's turn to take on the road to Sky as they climb to the top of Alp de Zwift. Yes, before we get into the details about the Alp de Zwift, those of you who are only joining us for the finale, the Zwift Games is comprised of a series of community events that have been running throughout the month of March. So where have you been if that's you? Anyone can take part in it as well, that's the amazing thing. And across the past three weekends, we've been in this studio broadcasting the Elite Championships as our top Zwifters have tackled the same courses as the community. Yeah, and for the first time ever, for our championships, we've had an open entry process, so any top level Zwifter was able to enter. Apart from John, he chose not to, which was a great shame, but it does mean he's here with us, which is good. Um, of course, that process made this the widest and most stacked elite field that we've ever seen. And the races have clearly demonstrated this because across the men's and the women's races, over 300 athletes from 35 nations have saddled up to determine who the best Zwifters in the world really are. Oh yes, and there's been five unforgettable championships for our men and women so far. So let's quickly recap on the story. Let's do that. Week one saw the men and women take on the Sprint Championship with back-to-back -back races, including two brand new Zwift courses, eliminating riders until only the strongest 10 remained for a tense Glasgow City Centre showdown for the win. And next up was that epic championship, and that is exactly what it said on the tin. Throughout the 82 kilometers of racing, both races were extremely entertaining and came right down to the line, as you can see on the pictures. You can check out all these full broadcasts on YouTube, just in case you feel like you've missed out. Oh, I love Neil Fryer's celebration in there, fantastic. So let's see how our women did, shall we? The win in week one and our first gold concept Z1 was taken by the Swiss rider Catherine Führer uh, with a perfectly timed sprint, pipping Liz Van Howling and Mika Soderstrom to the line. The remainder of the riders also scored, of course, vital points towards that Wahoo overall championship. And then in week two, it was Führer again, riding away to glory on that hilly KOM Strider gold concept bike with Gabby Guerra and Lou Bates rounding out the podium. High place finishes there though from Kolchinski, Soderstrom, Van Hooling and Balforth also set them up excellently in the overall going into the final week. Yes, I'm looking forward to seeing Balforth this evening because she's been so impressive these first two weeks. Anyway, here it is, that Wahoo overall leaderboard going into this final championships. And boy, is it tight at the top. Look at that. Catherine Furrer has a five point buffer and then there's only two points separating second and fourth. John, this Wahoo overall title really is anyone's to take, and it's going to come down to the battle on the Alp tonight, as we thought it might. And it really is. The one good thing, it'll be really easy to follow and find our current leader. They, Catherine Fear will be wearing that golden jersey astride her golden bike as well. Yeah, and of course that all leads us to here. A mountaintop showdown on the iconic Alp du Zwift to crown the ultimate climber. The points gained from our racers will also determine, of course, the Wahoo overall champion. And we're going to go into this in much more detail shortly. But just before that, a quick reminder of our prizes. The winner of the Climb Championship will get a gold Concept Z1 bike in-game. And there's some great prize money on the line too. $7,000 for the winner, $5,000 for second place, and $3,000 for third. So far, Catherine Fuhrer has won two of these. So I guess it's always nice to have a spare bike. Absolutely. And then the big one, of course, the Wahoo Overall Championship. A gold concept Z1 bike in-game, $10,000 and that blingtastic Wahoo kicker to whoever pedals their way to the win. Not bad. No. Now, earlier in the week, we had our good friend Matt Stevens go and get hands-on with this gorgeous bike. And some would say he got a little too hands-on, you know. Um, let's not go there, but we'll see for yourselves. Rumour has it that security even had to pry him away from the bike, which the camera stopped rolling. So, although we can't confirm or deny the involvement of security, we will hand you over to him. Matt. I'm here today at Zwift headquarters to take you behind the scenes to show you what's at stake for the overall prize in the Zwift games. And here it is, the gold Wahoo kicker bike. There's only two of these in the entire universe. And one will go to the overall winner of the men's and the women's. Features include carbon fiber seat post, gold bar tape, carbon fiber bottle cage, a Zwift games crest just there, and also a golden flywheel. Actually, there's nobody around. I'm going to quickly hop on. God, just imagine tackling the Alpha Zwift on this beauty. 
In the women's standings, we have Catherine Fuhrer leading with a maximum 200 points and only five points behind sharing second place is Gabby Guerra and Mika Soderstrom. So who will be the winner of the $10,000 and one of these beautiful, iconic machines? Thank you, Matt. Now, we filled you in on the overall championships and showed you that beautiful golden bike. Should we have a look at today's racing on this climb championship in a bit more detail? So here it is, the road to Sky. The route starts downhill through the jungle, but that's the easiest it's going to get as it's all uphill from there. A riders turn right and then they get to take on the 21 hairpins of the Alp, rising into the clouds through the snow, climbing up to 1,036 meters in only 12.2 kilometers. So a pretty horrible average gradient awaits 8.5%, but there's some parts a lot steeper than that. So on a climb like this, there is really nowhere to hide. Absolutely. There are also, crucially, no power-ups for this one either. It's just the riders and their legs. Now, the Yeti question mark halfway up the route profile remains exactly that, a question mark. But we'll get back to that in a second, shall we? I'd say the Alp is probably, well, in fact, I'll tell you, the Alp is definitely the most iconic stretch of road in Zwift. Pretty much fitting for our finale today, too. And it exactly replicates France's infamous Alpe d'Huez and has been host to some equally epic battles in, as its real life counterpart. Yesterday, for instance, the men's finale was one of the most exciting climaxes we've probably ever seen. And the women's finale is set to be even more of a tense finish. Do go back, by the way, and watch that men's race if you haven't seen it already. And yesterday, we told you the climb has been completed over 1.1 million times since it's been released in the game. I can also tell you it's been completed another 10,000 times this weekend in the Zwift Games community races because you lot are really hardcore. The average time at the Alp of those all those rides is 82 minutes, but we do expect our elite women to go around twice as fast as that today. Wow. Um, just to bring to life for you at home how good these women really are, we've had a look at the personal best times for today's field. Look at this. Amazingly, they are in the upper 30 minutes with Illy Gardner, the British rider, having done an eye-watering 38.21. And Christian Kulczynski, the American champion, 39.53. In fact, our 10 fastest riders have all previously gone under 42 minutes. Just try riding up the Alp and see how far you get after 42 minutes. I'd probably still be in the jungle, John. Looking for birds in the trees, most likely. Yeah, there's, always, there's a right-hand turn, you have to remember. to. I'm scared, of, yeah, I'm scared of yetis. I'm highly it's unlikely really, to go that probably far. Probably the safer place to be. Hmm. Um, Yes, well, we did we did touch on the Yeti issue yesterday, didn't we? I'm not sure we really got to the bottom of it. As a little reminder, our resident Yeti hunter, Dave Toll, asked our elite riders to help us kind of clear it up. Have you seen the Yeti? Have you ever seen the Yeti? Have you seen the Yeti? Have you ever seen the Yeti? Have you ever seen the Yeti? Have you ever seen the Yeti? I've actually never seen the Yeti. I don't think I have. Uh, I, I don't recall seeing him on the hour. I haven't. I, I haven't. I haven't, but I plan on seeing him on Saturday night. That feels like it clears things up. Uh, I think. <laughs> so... Anyway, following all of that, I have been reliably informed by Zwift HQ that the Yeti did indeed make an appearance on yesterday's broadcast. Apparently, it's their clearest day. Did you see it, John? No, I think I spotted it. I think you might need your eyes tested. <laughs> You're probably right. Well, I know I didn't anyway. Did any of you at home, though? It's kind of, I have to say, still feels like a bit of a conspiracy theory to me, but I guess only time will tell tonight. Keep your eyes peeled. Will the shy beast show its face? It sounds quite cuddly, and I kind of feel sorry for it in a way, really. It's probably hiding with good reason. Does it understand, though, that it's too late to win that Wahoo kicker bike? If they can get it off Matt Stevens' hand. Yes, well, that in itself is going to be quite a task. Stay tuned, anyway, to follow all of the action, as well as the Yeti, apparently. But now we've seen the route, for the final time in the women's half of the Zwift Games, let's get into the riders to watch for the mountaintop finale. Yes, here we go. Um, 
obviously, John, we can't go any further than mentioning Catherine Furrer, our race leader in that golden jersey. Winner of rounds one, the sprint championship, winner of the epic championship. But right at the beginning of this, and the, the beady-eyed amongst those viewing at home will have scanned across, looked at the numbers, and noticed that, and I'm going to use this word very carefully, she is the weakest of the riders there. And that's a harsh thing to say, isn't it? Bearing in mind how good she is. Yeah, well, still 4.4 watts per kilo for 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's still pretty special, yeah. so you're not messing around. But yeah, but we don't really know how hard she's ever gone at Alta Zwift. Maybe she hasn't gone full gas and done the best time in any of these races. Maybe she's had a problem. So there's still a little bit unknown. Does that golden jersey give you that extra couple yeah. of watts as well? Yeah. Push you on a bit further. Well, but there is a lot of pressure on there. If you look, even just comparing those 20 minute PBs. Yeah. Um, Gabby Guerrero is the rider with momentum behind her, I think. She was second in the Epic Championships. She continued to improve as an elite Zwifter all the way through the Zwift Grand Prix during the winter. She's kind of almost feels like she's building towards this really big performance. I've just got this feeling that tonight could be that one. Um, the rider at the end, though, the British rider, John, although we're trying not to be biased here, we do need to give a shout out for Lily Gardner, don't we? Yeah, one of the. Uh, one of the best on the Alp before 38 minutes 21 and the best Alp the Zwift time. She's coming in for this final round, so she's coming as exactly as her riding style says, full send up the Alp the Zwift. So it'll be interesting how her tactics really affect the overall as well. Mm. Do riders like Kulchinski get her a follow Gardner and use her to get almost piggybacked up the climb and try and put riders and points yep. in between the rest of their rivals? Yeah, I wonder whether not being fe not featuring in the overall means that she's utterly freed up to take risks. She could throw it all out there tonight. It could go wrong, and she doesn't lose her place in the overall. No, exactly. She's come in, and that it's always so much going on. We saw the same last night, tactics-wise, between the overall battles. Yeah, it's uh, it's really exciting when we get onto the Alp to try and figure out where everyone is. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Now, if we didn't cover your favourite there, do look out for them in the full rider list, which will be scrolling across the bottom of the screen when the riders leave the pen. Now, the next thing for you to get involved with is some uh, some indecider thoughts from one of the riders. This time, our fan's favourite rider, definitely, is Kristen Kulczynski, and it was her turn to share her story behind the bike with Dave Toll. I am really excited to go visit one of cycling's biggest stars in the eSport arena. It's Kristen Kulczynski in Long Island. Kristen, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Let's talk about the format, why it's special. I think the format is amazing this year. It really lets each racer shine in their specialty. And then if you are that overall rider that can pull off a win or closest to a win to, to have the GC, I think it's awesome. You know, when I hear sprint championships, I, I thought, oh gosh, you know, I was, I, but I still was going to try. It's a longer kind of format. With the Epic, I was just like, this is amazing. I love this. Um, and then with the climb, I was like, ah, oh, my home. And I, I want redemption <laughs> also from this last uh, Grand Prix season. I, I, I didn't do my best. So it's kind of like, I'm gonna be ready to show what I can do on this Alp climb. What does it take for you to be that winner that might be special or above and beyond other races that you've done in the past? In my perfect world, it would be a hard race. So that, that way, when we're getting the finish, it, it is a whittled down group and we're not you know going in with a huge group. It's gonna be a quick thinking, like who's left? You know, you can you can plan all you want, but it's really going to be an on your feet kind of day, kind of seeing who's left in that final climb, I think. The woman who wins is going to have to do something either treacherous or sneaky. Is that what makes racing special? This isn't an exercise contest? For sure. Like, you can only be so strong, but you still have to have, like, the right move. You have to know, you know, the right time to attack or is that the break that's going to go or like there are a lot of racers doing this series that have a lot of teammates there's a lot of teams I think that are going to be doing team like things so kind of coming in with not having a, a full squad I'm just going to have to kind of be there for whatever's happening <laughs> All right, Kristen, I saw the highly coveted Wahoo Kicker bike in gold the other day. I have to think that fits your style? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, who wouldn't want a blinged out gold Wahoo kicker bike? <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's a pretty amazing prize. It's time for the quick fire round. Kristen, your favorite power up? Arrow. Breakaway or sprint? Breakaway. In the future, they make a film about the first ever Zwift games, and you get to cast who plays Kristen Kolchinski. Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> Guilty pleasure after a hard workout. It's got to be a full-on huge pizza, knowing I don't have a way in the next day. <laughs> okay. And you've been elected mayor of Watopia. I'm not surprised. What's your first decree? That I will always be mayor <laughs> of, of Watopia. <laughs> Kristen Kolchinski, good luck to you. I hope you have the race you work so hard for. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm really excited and I'm, yeah, ready to go. <laughs> Thank you so much. Arnie is a strong choice. She's not the only one to have picked our Arnie either. And don't forget, of course, if Kristen doesn't win the Zwift Games this year, I'm sure she'll be back. <laughs> Sorry. Um, anyway, great to hear from her. Uh, Kristen, of course, who is now Mayor of Watopia forever for life. By the way, if you enjoyed that chat, you can see the full length interview by checking out the link in the description on YouTube. And on that note, let's quickly bring up that overall leaderboard again, shall we? And have a little look. And you'll see from the points differences are all very tight at the top. If our women today perform, perform exactly in line with our personal best times we showed you earlier on in the show, Kulchinski, Bates and Guerra all would all end up on equal points of 288. Obviously anything can happen, and this would be an incredible turn of events if it worked out perfectly. But just to confirm, the rider who is the highest place on this final stage, if they are tying on points, that means they are finished the highest on the overall. Of course, Catherine Ferreira will always want to have something to say about that, but he feels she's always going to need a good, well, I'm really one of the best personal best you can come to up the Alp to defend her current position. Yeah, she's going to have to, you, you can't see her going any slower than her best in order to get that to happen. Now, the many permutations of how this could all shake out can be tricky to follow during the race. So to help us get a real sense of where things stand as the action unfolds, our broadcast team here at Zwift have developed a live virtual leaderboard that you're going to see on the left hand side of the screen during the action. And this will tell us and you what the overall leaderboard looks like for the Wahoo overall championship based on the riders current positions on the road. So it will keep changing and fluctuating. It'll make sense when you see it. Yeah, it's brilliant to keep track and it really yeah. keeps us on our toes as yes. well. But enough from us. Let's hear from the experts, Nathan Garrett and Hannah Walker, who will be your commentary team during the race. And joining them to offer his expert analysis is Martin Mertens. Martin, an elite racer for Toyota Elite. And he knows a thing or two about this climb as well. In fact, he won on the route in the Zwift Grand Prix earlier in this year, beating yesterday's second place rider, Leonard Tugels. Mm. Nathan and Martin, over to you. Thanks a lot, John. Well, nobody better to analyze the racing today than somebody who's absolutely dominated at the elite level. Martin Martins, it's great to have you here with us today. Real quickly, uh, who and how do you think these riders are going to take on this climb today? Is it going to be tactical? Is somebody going to go top to bottom, I mean, from bottom to top, full gas from the get-go? Or are they going to be watching each other a whole lot today, Martin? First of all, thanks for having me. And yeah, I think it's really tactical today because you have riders in here who still go to the today, like the guard, and And yeah, it's really tactical. It's a risk of blowing. Someone will maybe take the risk of blowing up. So yeah, I will will be funny. Yeah, definitely. It's going to be interesting to see if riders do take that risk right from the get-go. I think a lot of riders would prefer it to just be like when you're out on course there, you kind of prefer that you just get away and then can just do your own thing and try and hold on. When you're amongst a pack like that, the nerves just kind of stay with you the entirety of the climb then. So it's always like, what's going to happen? The question marks remain. Once you kind of get away, which 
on your climb, uh, when you won out there, it was right down to the line. Was that your experience? At least that's my experience, that the nerves stay with you until that break actually happens. And then once it's settled, either you're with it or you're not, then there's some acceptance that takes place and you can get into your own groove. But for the racers, till that moment, the nerves are high. Yeah, this climbing, such a climb is so tense. You always, you don't know the others. Uh, you know them, but you don't see how they feel. And it's like, okay, I'm feeling strong at some point or I'm feeling weak at some other point. And yeah, that makes it so hard to judge. And, and it's, it's like a lottery at some point or like a, like a poker game where you put down your card and either it sticks or it doesn't stick. And yeah, for my race back then, it was, it was all in at the, at the final and it worked. Yeah, so uh, as far as the reactions to the riders and their paces, I mean, do you follow if somebody makes an attack or do you just stay with, the, uh, with your own pace? I mean, or do you just kind of have to manage what you're up to at that moment? I mean, with so much on the line, you're going to see riders blowing up left and right, I would think. Yeah, it's, you just go, I go with everything. I, I want to, I want to be in the mix somehow to say, because uh, I go with the right riders. I know that that really go all in. And at that point, you, you know, it's, it's super hard and it's either go or go home. 100%. Well, we're going to see who's going to go or go home in just a moment. As Martin says, let's head back to the studio. Yeah, don't go anywhere. Thank you, Nathan and Martin. Now, the race is inching ever closer, so do not go anywhere, as we say. But first, our team of hosts and analysts made our predictions of who we thought would win the Wahoo overall before the Zwift Games got underway two weeks ago. Should we see how we're getting on with those predictions, John? Well, um, Nathan is employed as our resident Zwift expert. Turns out he knows a thing or two, although he kind of has to pick his own wife in Gabby as well, doesn't he? Yeah, I guess so. It's a, <laughs> it's a close battle there. You have to look at... You've got a good pick there with Lou Bates. They're only two points mm. behind yeah, as well. No, absolutely. So you're doing well. I know you did just, all right. You had a lot of confidence yesterday, yeah. but I don't know if it's going to be the same well, today. I, I've really picked Lou Bates at the beginning of this based on just how good she was in the Zwift Grand Prix during the winter uh, into the early spring. And, um, and a lot of that was down to her sprinting, John. So if she, if Lou is able to hang on to Guerrera or Kilchinski and the others, and it comes down to some kind of sprint at the end of the uh, Alp de Zwift, I think she's got a really good chance. Your pick, John, by the way, Sandrine Etienne for this is an absolutely cracking one because if she's anywhere near where she was during that Zwift Grand Prix, she rode away from the whole field. Yeah, and that's exactly what I went for. All, I put everything <laughs> in for the epic KOM, not, not the epic KOM, the Alp de Zwift. Sorry, on the final day. So it's it's an interesting one, you know. And of course, Matt Stevens, Kulchinski, yeah, are not far off on the uh, on the points as well. So it's some some exciting stuff. Obviously, the overall is more important than our predictors. Yes, I, I, you have to. Say, we have yes. to say Ma that. We I have think. to. We are, yeah. Even if we're being pretending to be humble, yeah, that is kind of important. Though. Yeah. And if I don't win, I will be a little sad. We will revisit the final predictor standings at the end of today, of course, to see how much I've won by. <laughs> we'll see. But in the meantime, do let us know your predictions in the chat, of course. You'll probably get it right. And if you don't forget, by the way, if you do want to give a ride on to support the riders around you, get your companion app out just as you would when you're Zwifting. Search for the rider that you want. And today we've got Finnish cycling esports sensation Jenny Eck. Jenny Eck rides for Zwift Grand Prix team Toyota Elite and is the Finnish national esports champion and is currently sitting just outside that top 10 in the Zwift games as well. So do give her a ride on on today's race. Yeah, let's hope she has a good finish, eh? Sorry, um, I've got to keep apologising. <laughs> You can, of course, by the way, follow Jenny uh, and favourite her as well if you like. Our most ridden, rider, ridden on rider, of course, from last week is Kristen Kulczynski, as she has been throughout this whole Zwift game. So watch out for her in her blue jersey and don't forget to give her your ride ons throughout the race too. Oh, and the other riders as well. Uh, it's, yes. Do you know, it would be fitting to see her take the victory today, Kulczynski, because she is so much the people's favourite as well, isn't she? So, um, yeah, you, well, you can see how many ride-ons they've been given, but it'd be a tough one. It's really exciting. You can't really figure out where it's going to go, but no. 
we want to get down to it as soon as possible. Well, we're going to get around to it right now because the race is about to begin. Let's hand over to your commentary team, Nathan Guerra and Hannah Walker. Thank you so much, Jess and John. The ladies are jumping out on course for the final of this Zwift Games, and it is the Climb Championships out here. Hannah, this is going to be an exciting one. Really excited to commentate next to you as these ladies are about to take on the most challenging climb in the world of Watopia. It certainly is, Nathan, and it's going to provide so much entertainment. It's going to be exciting, and it's so close in those standings. I really think those tactics of the riders and, and how they're going to ride this one is going to be going to be crucial. But of course, this isn't a race like what we, we, we saw on, on the opener on the, the sprint championship where, you know, you could ride it very savvy, you know, you had to be very astute in your tactics and you could get through the the different races and, and make it into that final race on the Glasgow crit circuit. This is also one where Physically, you need to be in top, top shape. And so even if you see a rival go up the road, if you can't respond physically, that's it. That could be a big, big change in this championship. So it's close. It's going to be a, a real thriller. And I think as well for, for those riders who haven't done the, the previous two weekends of racing, how is that going to change everything for those who are fighting for that overall that's a really good point, actually. There may be some riders, for those that have watched the first two of this championship, first two races, that they might not know. And it's a little bit of surprises out there for some of the other riders as well. Uh, you know, Illy Gardner not participating in the first two, but being hands down one of the strongest climbers, not only in Zwift, but in the world. She owns so Absolutely. many queens on the mountains, actually. She essentially is a hunter when it comes down to taking down climbs like this. I think everybody is thinking about her as far as well as Sandrine Etienne, who dominated in the Zwift Grand Prix up to the top of this climb specifically, who they let go early on, maybe not thinking that she was as much of a factor, Hannah, as she ended up being in that race. I, I agree totally, Nathan. I really think that during that Zwift Grand Prix, everyone really underestimated the French woman, Sandrine Etienne, and they they didn't know what to expect of her. And so today, I think she's certainly going to be a marked rider. But again, Sandrine Etienne, she hasn't raced the previous two weekends. So it's going to be a very, very different proposition if, if she's allowed up the road, perhaps those in the, the top of the standings, Kulczynski, Führer, maybe they'll be happy to, to let her go and because it's really going to come down to those riders looking for those points in the championship, making sure that they don't blow up on, on this climb up to the, the Alpe de Zwift. And when you take a look at the top left of our screen, Nathan, you know, it's, it's very different to one week ago where they had a very, very long race in that epic over 80 kilometers of racing and you look at what we've got today and 15.2 kilometers remaining and you think wow it's a, it's a short race but don't underestimate the Alpe Zwift. It's a great point actually as far as the difference between last week and this week. Last week you had a lot of fatigue setting into the legs over time and uh, a lot of the reports actually from the ladies was cramps later on in the race and, you know, the fatigue that had set in. This is a very different proposition. Essentially, you're riding to the bottom of a climb and then tactically taking it on as hard as you possibly can without blowing up and getting rid of your rivals. You essentially get to set up perfectly for an all-out power smash fest who can essentially throw that left hand right hand hook at the exact right time while putting everybody on the ropes certainly and you've got this 5.1 kilometer run into the bottom of the Alpe de Zwift and so you know you can already see the the pace that that has been set it is slightly downhill you can see just that speed and you can see in the top right hand corner of the screen the, the gradient minus 2%, minus 3%. So naturally, it is going to be fast. But that being said, you know, everyone is wanting to make sure that they're, they're holding their position up in the, the bunch, not dropping too far back. 
Um, but also coming into this, making sure, because it is such a, a short race of, of 17.3 kilometers, making sure that you're well warmed up, making sure that your engine is ready for, for what's to come, because there's no room for mistake today, Nathan. 100%. And uh, as the riders are taking it pretty easy through this section, just to let everybody know why they may be doing so, uh, essentially this is just the lead-in to the climb. Uh, they will be taking a right-hand turn and hitting pavement. They will not be doing dirt through this section. As uh, through here, there's a whole lot of dust kicking up. And uh, for those that are unfamiliar, this th section, of course, definitely does slow down a little bit. We have seen riders maybe try, yesterday at least, we saw a couple of riders maybe trying to get away a little bit to give themselves a little bit of extra breathing room on the climb, but didn't end up going much of anywhere. Well, it looks like we are taking a look uh, at Fuhrer right now, and we did have a chance to have a conversation with her to ask her about how things have been going throughout the series. Oh, the epic race last week was amazing. It was just from start to the finish, an uh, exciting race for me. Uh, I haven't been racing such a long race, so I didn't know really what to expect. Uh, so I expected worse, that it's going to be a hard race with lots of attacks, uh, lots of team tactics, which didn't seem it went this way. So I could save my legs for the last time which I really love, and I could just smash it up all the way to the finish line. So I knew at the finish line or 100 meters before that, I, that I'm going to win. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy about this one. The Road to Sky is actually a, a route I have been racing so much, like all the other ones in uh, Vatopia. So I'm looking forward to this one. Uh, there are so many strong uh, climbers out there, so I'm surely not the best climber, so my skills are not in, in climbing, but uh, I try to do my best to go this 45 minutes or 40, 45 minutes, whatever it will be, up there and do some uh, damage control. <laughs> well, it looks like the damage control is going to start at this moment as the, the riders are starting to get into the climb officially here. This first little kick here into 10% gradient and 9% 10% as you can see with Joanna Tidholm and Illy Gardner immediately making her way to the front of the pack. Hannah, this initial kick here of 10%, quite the gradient right off the bat, and it does tend to cause a whole lot of separation right from the get-go. And you're already seeing, Nathan, riders being distanced, Cat Ridgeway just being uh, shot out the back there, the British rider, and several more riders. One of the riders there from Movistar just getting distanced. And so Sophie Wright also is, is being dropped currently for Fenix de Kernink. And so, you know, this is... It, it, it's a ferocious start to, to the bottom of the Alp. And, you know, we're, we're talking about that right-hand turn. Riders wanting to make sure they're, they're up in position. You can just see there Gardner just setting her own pace. Uh, Sandrine Etienne is there. Bates is there. You know, sitting within the top ten, it's all of those big, big favourites. As we take a look on the left-hand side, the Wahoo overall live leaderboard currently. Garrett with 290, Lou Bates 289 as it currently stands. Quite Ridge like this uh, live virtual standings. Yeah, they're really good. They're, I absolutely love it. And it's going to give us an idea throughout the entirety of the of this climb exactly how things stand as it works out, out on course. As we saw yesterday, we could work the numbers out live as it was uh, playing out in front of us. Now, to the field, it looks like here hammering away around the back of the pack here is it's just going to be about holding on to your own pace to the top of this climb now at this point. We're looking at right as well there. On the left-hand side of your screen is going to be the live cam coming in from her. Uh, I want to chat real quickly here with Martin Martins uh, about the lower sections of this climb because this pace is absolutely frenetic right now. Uh, Martin, what is going on in the riders' heads at this moment? Like, What could the tactic be with the way that they're starting to ride this at such a high, insane pace? The, the, to the first half in the climb is always pretty hard. Um, people start out pretty hard, some start too hard. What Eileen Gardner is doing here, she's just blasting it from the bottom. But on the other hand, you see someone like Fura, she's just really trying to pace it, I think. And yeah, it's, it's, it's always the first half in is, is like, a, like a sprint race. 
And so, I mean, is it important to, I mean, with the way that Ely is riding this, I mean, she's at 6.7 watts per kilogram or so at this moment. I'm seeing 6168. I mean, she is absolutely smashing this right from the get-go. She seems to be in another uh, <laughs> world. I mean, she is on another planet right now already as far as watts per kilogram. And to try and follow this at this point with already eight seconds on the board, nine seconds, ten seconds, it's, it's a risk, isn't it, Martin, to, to, to try and go with something like this? I mean, if you do hold on to that wheel, great, but what is the cost, right? And you could find yourself in a really bad situation or a really great situation. There's so much risk-reward, isn't there here, Martin? Yeah, absolutely. But the, the girls have now lost their wheel, her wheel, so she's off. They need to work together now to get some kind of draft of each other, at least a little bit of draft that is there on that, on that gradient and try to roll her in. She's front-loading it. She will be probably fading or trying to yeah, pace it at some point. But, yeah, they need to work together now. Yeah, I can see that. Well, uh, as and just from your experience, I remember on your Zwift Grand Prix race, it was like this, but there were points up for grabs. There's no points up for grabs through this section, of course. And it's almost like they're riding it the same way, though, with this intensity up front. Uh, and, and and from your experience, were you were kind of in that second or third pack at that moment, I think, and then uh, followed wheels rather than making that initial attack. Yeah, I, I watch guys I know that can climb the way I climb, so I try to be around them, and they did about the same, so that was good. And I think some people like Lou and Gabby are doing that at the moment as well. They know they climb about at the same pace, so they want to work together for now and then they will just hammer it later in the race yeah that's a great point well thanks so much martin now as we get into this emma belforth now starting to do what emma belforth does and we saw this from her as well we could see a one two go here if belforth continues on pushing the pace uh, at the front because we know she can hold a crazy high threshold can't she hannah she certainly can. She certainly can. And we saw that in the opening weekend where she completely dominated the first two races. She almost made it a hat trick of wins on that opening night in the, the sprint championship where it, on the, the Glasgow uh, crit circuit, but was caught, you know, in the in the closing few hundred meters. I just want to give a little update. I was just keeping an eye on the standings there of where. Uh, some of our top favourites are for the Alders Whiff, Nathan, while you were having a chat there with, with Martin Maddens. Uh, Katrin Fuhrer is at 47 seconds behind our lone leader, Eile Gardner. But up ahead, a further 25 seconds is Kristen Kulczynski. She's alongside Gabriela Guerra. Uh, also there is Sandrine Etienne. Belfort a couple of seconds ahead of that. So our current leader in the overall standings, the Swiss woman from Virgi uh, Virginia's Blue Ridge uh, 2024, is currently in a lot of difficulty and could she be losing this overall in this gold jersey yeah it's a good question here looking down the field and i believe Catherine fur at this moment outside of the top 10 even top 12 so it's going to be a tough one for her to bring back that time it did look like right from the get-go she was like i gotta ride my own pace and her hopes are in that riders up ahead blow up and go backwards and lose enough places and that's what we saw yesterday from josh harris uh we did see him trying to you know as well as thomas thrall trying to uh take back as much of that damage that had been done by freddie Ovid, unable to do so obviously here so now today we're going to see a similar situation i think from the current leader to try and minimize the damage later on after these ladies get further up the uh road here because it's going to be all about taking back places to see how many riders up ahead have just gone way too hard. And I think it's all about pacing, isn't it, Nathan? I mean, you, you also don't want to underpace this and have something left in the tank by the top. And having seen your rivals gain, gain a lead, and in the end you realize perhaps I was, uh, you know, maybe not taking the, the, the risk that I needed to, but equally, that being said, on the other hand, you don't want to overpace this, Nathan, and completely blow up in the final couple of kilometers because 10 kilometers remain here. So much can happen, and we're seeing riders spread all across the Alp here. And so if you go over your, your limits and you go into that red zone, 
it's going to be incredibly difficult, if nigh on impossible, to recover from that. So it's it's all about pacing. I think it's all about maybe splitting the, the Alp into different segments, different sections, almost breaking it up so you're not seeing 12.2 kilometers, the 21 hairpins, you may be breaking it up mentally just for that 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 mental uh, release to say okay well we've got the first part out of the way okay let's now let's focus on the middle section and then let's focus on that that final uh, few uh, few kilometers and so it's uh, it's really interesting it's interesting to see how different riders approach the the alp but uh, the gap coming down due to the impetus in that chasing group with Belfort 28 seconds well, sorry, it just gained a, a few more seconds, sorry. Bates at 29. Also, Söderstrom is... Just get a time check on the, the Swiss woman. She's at 1 minute and 9 seconds. Yeah, and it, now the placings, though, as you can see, Catherine is making her way up the leaderboard a little bit. So she is picking riders off one by one. And so... You know, that could be right. That could be something that in in your head you start thinking about the time gap rather than the placings. But in her mind, I think she's just gonna be thinking person after person. Each person that I pick off takes points away from those that are up the road now at this point. So every single one of those is gonna be someone that she's just gonna try and time it just right and just try and you know it's going to be this marker for her, the next one and the next one. And by the end, she may be able to pick off enough riders between herself and those leaders to bring back those points. Right now, we're only looking at a 287 and a 292. It's not a whole lot of points in between. I think we also have to remember that Krista Kaczynski and Kachin Führer, they're teammates on the Virginia's Blue Ridge 2024 team. And so for them, if they can try and have two riders on the podium of the overall and you can you look at those live standings currently Kolchinski and Führer they're on the same points at the moment 287 points if Führer can uh, start to make her way and, and of course like what you just said Nathan pick off a few more riders move up those standings and likewise with Kolchinski here what a performance that would be from from the long-standing American team Hundred percent, and I think that may be a tactic here. Now, one thing Kristen definitely can do is just beat these other riders. That is one thing that she, as long as she takes those points away by getting the best of these other riders, the job is done, and she's also been successful for herself. So I think the first go at all this is going to be about just taking as many points away from these riders as she can while having the greatest success for the team at the same time. At the other hand of it though too is that if she does get dropped from this pack, a big question mark is does she go ahead and still beat Catherine? Because if so, there's a point that's no longer for Catherine. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's really true and I think there's a lot of calculations going on here, and I think this is really where the sports directors, the, the team managers in the ear of the rider on, on their, their various uh, apps of, of communication is going to be crucial, Nathan. And I think you know that can make the, the big difference of those, those final standings and particularly the, the podium placings. We just saw in picture-in-picture, picture, Eileen Gardner, Lou Bates, Two riders from Great Britain, two excellent climbers, two very, very different styles. And I was keeping an eye on Isla Gardner's uh, RPM. She was around 73, 74 revs per minute, whereas Lou Bates, she was really spinning that high cadence, spinning the gear around 95, 96, 97 uh, revolutions per minute. So very different styles. It's just really interesting to see how the, the, the riders have those varying different preferences but how and how and what works for each rider yeah you can see Ellie Gardner up and out of the saddle over and over again then getting back into the rhythm so experienced when it comes to this uh, now as Illy here the avatar flying up here 9% gradient she's on she's coming into turn 13 
uh, now at this moment. And the rest of the riders are still on this section. This is one of the longer sections of, uh, of road uh, that you'll see between the, the turns and the switchbacks, actually. Now, real quickly, I am seeing a couple of questions in chat about data and things across the board. So let's have a quick little uh, chat about the race dashboard. Just as a reminder that our race dashboard is running again for these climb championships. You can fire up the dashboard by pasting the link on screen into your browser or clicking on the link in the chat. And just a reminder that it works best on Chrome. So let's quickly explain how it works. You'll see three columns in there. The left-hand column is going to show you groups on the road. A group will start when there is a gap of three or more seconds. For each group, you can see the number of riders in that group and the average speed and watts per kilogram of all the riders in the group. You'll also be able to see the time gaps and distance on the road between each group. This is going to be super useful for keeping track of the race and where everyone is on the road when things start to break up. In the middle column, you'll be able to see which riders are in each group and all their stats. Riders in each group are ordered by bib number so they don't jump around the screen. You can use the arrows at the bottom to toggle through all the, of the riders and groups in the field. This will allow you to follow your favorite rider in detail throughout the race. Then on the right hand side of the screen, you'll see the live camera feed from our riders to watch. If you need any help navigating the dashboard, you can also find a handy guide on how it works by clicking the little question mark icon on the bottom right hand of the screen. So the race dashboard, I've been using it. Hannah, I absolutely love the race dashboard actually because I'm able to go through the entirety of the field and find out exactly where everybody is at and figure out what is happening with my favorite riders. I, I totally agree, I totally agree, Nathan. And not only that, with the, the dashboard, being able to see riders on the right hand side racing and and so you can almost you can see them putting in that effort then you can look across at the riders see their their data uh, and it's uh, yeah it's, it's fascinating fascinating it is it really is and now we see Ellie Gardner now taking on the next turn to getting that speed up a little bit let's have a quick chat here with Martin I want to talk a little bit about the way that he rides the Alpha Zwift when it comes to the switchbacks, because we're talking a lot about the switchbacks, what turns they're on. They're almost about halfway, about halfway up the climb now at this point. And uh, how we're seeing these little accelerations. When is it best to accelerate? How do you take on the turns? Do you focus on the turns? Do you focus on the steep gradients? Do you focus on both? Because it's definitely not just tactical, but there's a skill to this kind of a climb. Yeah, you can use the turns to get up speed to use to carry that speed in the next turn and yeah you need to when it flattens out you need to get on a little push put a bit more power on the pedals get up to speed then you can ease off that little bit during the half the actual hairpin and then you can you need to get back and put on the power once it kicks up again yeah 100 percent and uh does and and when you're with a group the idea of being with them and all together kind of accelerating that speed, it definitely can cause some damage to the riders who are starting to fall off, can it, Martin? Yeah, don't think, okay, it's going to flatten out. I can go easy because you already see the turn. You need to push into the turn, be in the middle of the group, ideally, and then you can ease a little bit in the head, but it's, it's very dangerous, like you said, to, to lose a real day. Yeah, it definitely is. And then also with the speeds here, as far as pack dynamics and how it works, I mean, we see riders holding on to wheels and maybe not going by wheels or leading things out. Does it, With the kind of speeds that they're holding here, it really matters. And do you feel that in game when you're on a wheel, even though you're going uphill, there's a little bit of draft, isn't there, Martin? Absolutely. So one thing I analyzed yesterday was that the, the group size was bigger than in the Grand Prix. The power numbers were about the same in watts per kilogram. But the times were even faster than in the Grand Prix because just the group size was bigger. Ah, uh, gotcha. Well, speaking of group size, things are starting to get hot here in the group that is trying to chase down Illy Gardner. The moves are starting to be made here. Belfort just continues to go crazy hard into these steep sections. And then when it levels off, she just backs off a little bit, it seems like, and then back up again. She just seems to be consistently, though, the same pace, 5 watts per kilogram, maybe 5.5. Five. Heart rate's coming up, though, for all the riders, it looks like to me. Up into the 180s, though, for all of them here. Hannah, I think the attacks are really starting to come on here for this uh, second group. 
It is, it is. And, you know, they're, they're realizing that if they can try and work together in sort of inverted commas, um, then, you know, it, it adds to their benefit, Nathan. And now Führer into 10th place currently in those standings at two minutes and 19 in arrears to Eile Gardner. But uh, it's, it's, it's so close. And I keep you know, having my eye over that, that live standings on the, the left-hand side and seeing the way that Fura has paced this well. And I, I think she hasn't gone over her limit and she's moved herself up the standings slowly but surely and now moving her, herself up into second overall, one point behind Gera. She's also got someone to chase here. She's got a rider to in her sights it's that character chase isn't it and that always works in the favor of someone who is chasing as opposed to being chased uh, so you know if she only has to, to uh, take overtake these two riders ahead and she'll be back in the lead of the standings and i have to say chapeau to this ride this is a lot of pressure on the shoulders of katrin fuhrer having won the previous two weekends and then coming into this as the overall leader you know it's a big big prize at stake you've got the the ten thousand dollars prize money you've got the the wahoo kicker the gold wahoo kicker bike it's a lot to lose it's a lot to risk it really is and you can see here these two riders there's gonna be a ton of motivation for her at this point to take down these two riders gabriella garrett now up ahead though moving to belforce wheel to make sure it looks like that that is not going to happen look at the points changing time and time over and over again here with each and every time that you see one rider overtaken by the current overall leader then Gera going by another rider taking back that overall leaderboard it's still all to play for as we get into this second half of the climb now at this point they're already coming into turn number nine momentarily now at this point nine to go nine turns to go for the decision making moments here Illy Gardner still your leader though out on the she's actually already into turn number eight so starting to distance herself <laughs> on the switchbacks the pure climber bottom to top we talk about this can somebody go bottom to top well she's proven that it's possible she has she has and you know I, i'm very very sure that she'll be wanting to try and uh, go for for her pb let's not forget 38 minutes and 21 seconds current timing 27 minutes and 15 seconds so can she top that in the the closing kilometers it will be big big uh, difficult ask and of course she's not in the running for that overall championship Chinsky in that blue jersey as the leader of the, the ride-ons from last week is being distanced in the gap. Seven seconds now to the duo who are in that chasing group of Belfort and Gerda. As you can see, the ride-on cutoff there just coming in. Five minutes to get your ride-ons in. And Kolchinski uh, currently sitting with 295 ride-ons. I have a feeling she's most likely going to take that competition <laughs> down again. We'll see if she can do so. And uh, well, it's up to you, though. If you want to give a ride-on to your favorite riders, go ahead and open up your companion app. you got four and a half minutes to do so to add to their current live count. Out there is Illy Gardner sitting there at 127 on the live counter. Looks like 67 to Belforth, 147 to Gera, and Kochinski at two, almost 300 now at this point. Going to be a tough one. Uh, it's going to be like catching Illy Gardner if you want to try and uh, catch Kochinski on the ride on bombs today, isn't it? <laughs> it's just, it's changing every time you've just been talking, Nathan, keeping an eye on that from under 300, now 303 ride on 304. <sighs> What a fan base. She really is, you know, one of the you know, popular characters within the, the community, within esports. And, you know, it's, it's really showing. But I have to say, for all of you watching from around the world, 137 ridings for Illy Gardner, the Welsh rider, the climber who is currently leading up to the Alpe de Zwift on the road to Sky. She certainly deserves a lot more ride-ons here. Show the support. Greta with 153 too. 
And now it is the battle here between these two. It's Bellsforth versus Guerra here at this point. And Bellsforth now 4.8, 5.3. Now back to Illy Gardner at the front of the race. This is your top three overall at this moment. Bellsforth is going again, it looks like. Man, this is just non-stop action at the front of this race. But Gardner now, she's just going to continue to do her thing. She essentially just showed up for work today and said, okay, uh, this is my usual nine to five and uh, we're going to take it down now here. And it looks like she's got this one in the bag. Just a few more turns. Well, it's still about seven more turns to go. There's a long stretch actually through this snow section before it really starts to kick up into the final turns, Hannah. But uh you know, it looks like Illy is just, I mean, the predictions were right, and she definitely seems to have this one done and dusted. It's interesting, isn't it, in terms of the tactic coming into the, the Zwift games, and we know in, in week one, Nathan, that some riders were suffering from illness. They they couldn't uh, race in the, the sprint championship, and of course, it was a, a huge, huge shame for, for those who had really been targeting the Zwift games. For others, I, I, I wonder how much they really pinpointed the races that they wanted to do. So for, for Illy Gardner, she really had the the climb championship in the forefront of her mind. She knew she could be one of the most dominant riders here. And so because she's out of the overall championship, she's not got that battle with the, the other riders. And so at the moment, you know, heads and shoulders uh, above uh, and stronger than the, the others at the at the moment. And she's really just showing her prowess whenever the road starts to climb. 100%. Well, as we look at Gardner here, still steady. I think she's just gotten into her own rhythm at the front now. Steady 5.8 watts per kilogram. Absolutely insane pace. Now back to Lou Bates here. Now currently third overall on the virtual leaderboard. Still battling, though. Good to see Bates here. And I think Bates here has, uh, she does have Kulchinski up ahead. Uh, and if Kulchinski, you know, can, can continues to come backwards, Bates could find herself in fourth place over uh, overall on the day. Uh, I'm not sure that that may move her up or not uh, between her and Captain Fur only by one point. But still, for pride out here today for sure for Bates as she continues on. And uh, anything can still happen though, with plenty of climbing still to go. It seems as though Bates is starting to fade and she's been losing time to Kulchinski over the last six, seven hundred meters or so. The thing that she really needs to be wary of is Ola Kulinic or Fenix de Koenig, the, the Ukrainian rider who is sitting in sixth place overall at the moment. Because if Bates starts to lose a lot of time and really has, has overreached herself and then Kulinic catches her, Bates may start to fall down the standings and, and lose that position. She's still got a couple of points separating herself and Kulchinski, but she really needs to just pay attention to those who are behind. 100%. They're looking at Gardner here. Now back to Kulchinski here. Uh, she's going to win the Ride On jersey out here today. 365 Ride Ons for Kristen Kolchinski, uh, she takes down that ride on jersey again. Still fighting out there today, though. Kristen Kolchinski, 35 seconds from the Belfort and Guerra group. Uh, she takes down that ride on jersey. Thanks to everybody logging into the companion app and handing those out to her. Uh, she has been the winner of that competition all the way throughout today. We are getting into this back end section of the climb here into turns six. Five, four, and on turn six now, it does look like Belfort has put the hurt on. Uh, real quickly, though, right on here, Kristen here, 365. Really close, though. Holly Bergen was right there at 358. We thought it'd be impossible, but no. Bergen right there, Eck there, coming in for third for the right on, uh, uh, Hannah. Yeah, fantastic to see all the support from the community for, for all of our races tonight. And I have to say, you know, on, on such a difficult, demanding, physically tough uh, climb here on the Alpe Zwift, seeing those ride-ins drop in and you can see who is giving you those ride-ons, it's just those little bits of, of dopamine, isn't it? It's that little bit of encouragement. It's that motivation uh, on the climb and certainly uh, may take away a little bit of the pain, but it also shows the support. Yeah, it does. And it does look to me like Belfort has distanced herself from 
Uh, Garrett now at this point, and at the moment that happened, Kristen Kolchinski actually pulled out of the race, it looks like. And so, at this moment here, it is tied on screen, but I have a feeling that is going to completely change the entirety of the standings now at this point, as Fur has it moved up to eighth place out on course from what I can see. Yeah, it's looking We're not like pulled out of the race. Wondering. Stop pedaling. Excuse me. She yeah. disappeared from my screen for a moment. And now she's on, she's on screen again, so she, she stopped pedaling, though, at this point. Yeah, I'm wondering if Krista Kolchinski has had a problem, a technical problem here. And this would be absolutely heartbreaking for the rider from the USA. At uh, now, Lily Gardner here, now to the front, 5.7 watts per kilogram from Gardner. She continues at the front end. Belforth now looking to try and come across. Not going to be happening. 110, though, is the gap, and it looks like a minute 29. Garrett still fighting for that third place overall. Belforth, though, distancing herself from Garrett, 5.7, 4.6. She's really done the work, Belforth, here as she continues on. You see her sitting down, changing up her style a little bit. She had been standing almost the entirety of this time up until now, and now as she comes around that corner at that 9% up and out of the saddle again as Belforth now continues on toward that second place overall. It's now it looks at the top like uh, Klein and Fur. I'm seeing behind here. Look at look at here real quick, Hannah. Kristen Kolchinski, Julia Klein, Catherine Fur, and Stephanie Sidlick all together here at this point. You can see the time gaps there: 341, 342, 343. Sidlick 346. There's a pack here behind Gara in no woman's land here, all in her lonesome. 136 back from Illy Gardner. Lou Bates now 230 back. So there's about a 40 second difference between them. So that's your top three to four at this point. But then it's going to be Kulinich there behind in fifth. Then the sixth to ninth place are all together, and that is a huge. Difference maker, that group right there with the current overall leader in the championship there. It's going to be huge, Nathan. It really is. And when you see you've got those four riders all together, the positioning of where Katrin Fuhrer comes within those four riders, because even a little further behind, Mika Söderstrom is not too distant from that group either. And so if they start to lose time or if Söderstrom has still got something left in the tank, it adds a fifth rider into the mix into that group and so where Führer finishes within that quartet currently is going to be the, the either it's going to either make her win the overall championship or she's going to finish on the podium here and so crucially the calculations will be made I'm sure at the moment from those sports directors and you know if the riders have got uh, that did I just see the Yeti on the left or am I seeing things? Did we see the Yeti? Ah, uh, uh, that's the section, of course. I may have missed it there as well. And I, you know, I always wonder if it actually exists because everyone's like, there's the Yeti. There's the Yeti. Oh, the Yeti's here. And I'm like, where's the Yeti? What? Yeah. <laughs> I always tend to miss it. I feel like it's this mythical, you have to have special lenses to see the Yeti, it seems to me. But uh, that, suppose, that, I guess it was there. You know, I want to bring in Martin Martins real quickly here. As we're into the final couple of turns here uh, for a quick little conversation. First and foremost, Martin, have you seen the Yeti? Because I, I didn't see anything just now, but Hannah says she saw it on that turn. I saw it the first time today, actually. But racing, riding, I don't see it. I just like you, I think, ah, oh, will there be the Yeti somewhere? And once I'm past that point, I never see it. Yeah, and it's a good. That's isn't that interesting out there? How when you're head down, just doing your best you possibly can, it's really difficult to uh, pick up any kind of scenery besides the road and the wheels that are ahead of you. Now, we've gotten to a situation where we've got a top three separated now at this point by about well over a minute fifty four. Here is the lead up to. Uh, our leader, Illy Gardner, but Belforth here about a minute 18 back from there. And then we've got third place with Gara Bates chasing with 50 seconds, but a lot can still happen. I mean, if you really blow up in the latter halves of this race, you can completely go backwards, can't you, Martin? 
Yeah, that's, the, the climb can get so long if you've got bad legs on that point. You can probably the, the last three habits take longer than the, than the rest of the race. And yeah, we will see here, but I don't think that, that some of those top three will crack like that. They got some, some good uh, constant power on there. So yeah, the, the race will be now for the overall, and that's going to be very, very, very tight. And nice to see um, Kuczynski drop back to Fura to help her, because I think she didn't sense that she can get into those top three. So she dropped back to help her teammate and get her teammate that overall. Yeah, and it looks like the pacing is there, and that's exactly what is going to happen out here. It's going to be a one-point difference, and Kolchinski currently is that, chasing down Stephanie Sidlick actually out there. That would be a two-point difference if they are able to make the catch here. But all Kolchinski has to do at that moment is sit up, and they just need to not be caught by any riders behind, which it looks to me at this moment like that is exactly what may be happening as long as Fur can hang on to Kolchinski's wheel to the top now as you look at Catherine Fur here. This is going to be taking the rounds though at the top here. I believe that's going to be Gardner with the, coming into the final couple turns now at this point. Yeah, I'm glad we've got uh, Mad Mantens with us here, Nathan, because we, Kristen Kolchinski was... You know, she she sat up. I could see her on her uh, on her camera inside her pain cave, and I was thinking, this is heartbreaking. You know, she great 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 teamwork. I really have to doff my cap to to her, and what she's doing here, pacing uh, Katrin Fura back up, just making sure she's looking after her, having that that team support, that moral support, giving her that motivation and encouragement at at the moment, and. As, as Martin said, all she needs to do, Kulczynski, is to allow Fuhrer to overtake her come the finish line, and it'll be one point difference as it stands currently in those live standings. And I think when the road, and I've started to notice here, when the road starts to really rise and we start to see some steeper gradients, that's when Fuhrer starts to lose the wheel of Kulczynski, but she stays within herself. She doesn't overreach. She doesn't go over her limit. And now we're on to this section here where it's a little bit more of a, let's say, steadier gradient. And she's right back onto the wheel. She is about to uh, come up to the, the American Stephanie Sidlick. So that'll be another rider to yeah. overtake and another point gained. Yeah, it would be interesting if they can overtake Sidlik here now at this point. I mean, Sidlik really well known for her climbing. And I mean, this is really a standout ride from Fur. This is absolutely amazing what she is doing out here today. On Kuczynski's wheel, obviously the motivation is there. The, the heart rates have to be through the roof. I mean, we're, and she's right there. I mean, as you can see, Gardner here on to the final turn, the last couple of times over the top. This is going to be your winner now. We focused a lot on the overall championship here at this point, but what a ride from Illy Gardner. I mean, this has been, and essentially, when you're this good and you just go from the bottom to the top, it kind of becomes this, the, the, the story is written the moment that she started to ride away, and that's how good she is, that she can write the book before you even, before you even think about finishing it. She is already done. Yeah, it's we're almost into the the final chapter, aren't we? Now it's just the the conclusion of the story. 198 beats per minute. She's been keeping a consistent watts per kilogram, six watts per kilogram, 6.2 watts per kilogram, and another little injection of pace from the uh, the British rider. 80 revolutions per minute, and still Nathan. 21 kilometers per hour at, at the moment on this climb she's flying she is and this is going to be the final 300 meters for illy gardner the queen of the mountain out here for sure and the queen of the mountain in real life as well as here out on this Alp de Zwift right now. It's going to be Belforth now at 132 back from her. So she has put her stamp on this one with Gardner rounding out, rounding out this final little bump at 7.3 watts per kilogram for Illy Gardner as she's going to take it down for Wahoo LaCole. And uh, I'd like to know what her average is out here today because it's been absolutely insane. Phenomenal performance by Illy Gardner. What a way 
to come into the Zwift Games on the climb, the road to Sky on the Alpe de Zwift and take the win by such a considerable margin. Terrific performance. Now, Gary, Gary here in third place here, 235 back from that, battling still to hold on to that third place overall. It's going to be Emma Belfort, though, that has continued on already into the final turn as it's uh, Gary here now losing, though, that one point to Führer as she looks to try and battle to the top. Gara here now still going to put everything down, though it looks like this. She's up and out of the saddle. 279 watts for a kick at 178 beats per minute, but could not hold on to that kick from Belfort as Belfort continues on at 6.5 watts per kilogram ahead. Battling on. It's been such a close race all the way in this Wahoo overall. Uh, leaderboard we've been following it closely Guerra she's not giving in though all the way to the top and Führer just take a look at the the stats side by side here at the moment Guerra 310 watts uh, at the moment 5.5 watts per kilogram Führer at 5.3 watts per kilogram uh, it's uh, it's going to be a matter of a couple of points in it now, Belforth, amazing ride here from Belforth to the top as she goes and takes down that second place overall in this uh, climb today. And uh, that will put her in currently fifth place overall in the standings for the Wahoo overall live leaderboard. Now, Garrett to take down third place here. Uh, if she can just make her way to the line, but you've got to pedal every last pedal stroke, don't you? And it's still extremely painful, the kind of efforts that these riders now are having to put out here to make it to the line. And as you can see here, Bates here ramping things up, up into 5.7 watts per kilogram, 5.6. She's got her still, actually, you can probably see her a little bit on horse here. So Bates here with a second wind of effort as she starts to kick on uh, to try and chase down Garen. This is going to be your third and fourth out on course as Garen makes one last kick to the line. Tried to hang on to belt force wheel, probably a little bit of energy zapped from the legs because of that final uh, kick to try and hang on to belt force, but it's going to be third it looks like for Gara at a 6.7 final little 342 just to stop on the pedals to the line yeah all the way and, and I think you know it's always been a, a, a brave effort up here and I said earlier on it's not just a, a tactical play out that we've seen in in the terms of you know perhaps a Kulchinski and Führer but physically it's so demanding and you know for, for Belfort when she made that initial acceleration it was it was one in which you know nobody could hang on to the wheel of the Swedish rider, and so almost a, a minute and twenty seconds between Belfort and Gera, Gera taking third on the climb up to the Alps of Swift. Bates is looking like she'll hold on for the fourth place, and it's all going to be the battle behind because Sidlik is thirteen seconds in arrears of Fura and Kolchinski at the moment. It's going to be a big, big ass to try and close the gap to those two. Yeah, and I believe Kolchinski is going to sit up here, so it's going to actually be two points of the difference here now at this point. It looks like Bates, though, going to be taking down fourth place overall. Solid ride here coming in for Lou Bates. That'll give her third overall on the uh, overall standings, depending on how things end up playing up for everybody behind, Mika may be able to make her way up if she's able to catch Klein, perhaps, as uh, we are seeing the point differentiation between her and, well, actually, no, that Mika there at 286, uh, it looks like maybe Bates is going to take that third overall for the Wahoo, Wahoo Live leaderboard. But now here's Fury, your current overall leader, and it looks like it's all but said and done for Catherine Fur. She's going to take down the Wahoo Overall Live leaderboard, and that will be the championship solidified by two points as she crosses the line in just a moment. Just a few more pedal strokes to take it down. And eight seconds separate Führer and Kulinich of Fennings to Kerning. The Ukrainian rider is empty in the tank. It's going to be, I think, too late for Führer to make the catch, but she's got that carrot in front of her. She's got something to chase. She's in that gold jersey. She's on the gold Tron Z1 bike. And at the moment, as it currently stands, she's going to take home the Wahoo kicker bike, the gold 
limited edition, only one in the world for the women. Wojcicki now crossing the line, taking down, it looks like, seventh place on the day. And that will be sixth place overall. Stephanie Siglet now coming through for eighth place at uh, a solid time. Uh, getting some amazing times coming through here, actually. I can see them on mine. Emma Belfort with a 38.51. I was seeing Gara there at a 40.08. Bates at a 41.01. Top, top times. Gardner was so fast, I don't have a listing actually for her at this moment. I think she was in the 37s. That's that's crazy fast. 37 minute up to Zwift. Absolutely flying. Now Klein here making her way to the top here for that. Uh, what place? Should we round it out the ninth place overall? 5.53, almost six back from your leader. Now Miki Soderstrom here making her way to the top. And she was tied for second overall coming in here. She's going to, it looks like, be able to take down fourth overall just behind Lou Bates. Lou Bates uh, making her way up the leaderboard with an amazing effort out there today. As uh, Mika, though, one of your top riders, she took down a lot of top spots, actually, throughout the championships. It's been amazing to see Mika and the kick that she has. And what a ride for her to ride into the top ten, actually, uh, in this race out here today, being known for the sprinting that she has and the punchiness that she has. Great ride coming in from her. Now it's going to be Sandrine, Sandrine Etienne coming to the top here now, a past winner on the Alpe de Zwift as she makes her way to the line. Hannah, amazing rides all around. Is Natalie Stevenson here going to be your top 12 riders? Looks like nobody around her. Yeah, his ride is scattered all over the Alpe de Zwift and uh, a tremendous ride there by the French woman Sandrine Etienne to, to cross the line. 11th place on the night, 6 minutes and 43 seconds in a race to Illy Gardner. And of course, she, she knew this climb well from when she took that victory in the Zwift Grand Prix during the winter months. And Natalie Stevenson, the Scottish rider, just coming towards the, the line. There's Aitken. Going to hold on for 13th place by the looks of it. Here's our Finnish woman who we highlighted at the, the top of the show, Jenny Eck. You take a look at you know, yeah. the, the, the time gaps that have opened up, Nathan, on this climb. This has been a demanding, physically tough finale to the Zwift Games. Yeah, and it does look like Gabriella Norden here making her way to the top. And you, this that's a good point. You know, the reality of when you get into a climb like this, we had talked about this a little bit yesterday. When you get into stage racing and GC contention, the reality of when you hit the climbs, it completely opens everything up, isn't it? It's Why are we so patient? We ask a lot of times, or at least people who are maybe a little more unfamiliar with GC contention, why is everybody so patient? Why are they letting riders go? Why is this not as contended for? Because they know it's all going to come down to this climb. We can see the big changes here in the overalls at this point amongst the ladies specifically because of this climb, can't we? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And we see the, the Norwegian Nevin come to the line. Coldclough, who has been a, a real protagonist in my opinion. And I really think, Nathan, I don't know about you, but I think... Colcliffe has made a big step up over the last three weekends. The way that she's raced, her physical ability, her performance, tactically how she's raced. You know, I think we've seen some some real brilliant performances, but something going into the, the future and future racing where riders can take a lot of confidence from how they've performed over the last three weekends. 100%. Prowse now making her way to the line. Liz Van Howling as well. Top riders in the world of Zwift racing. And you can see uh, Prowse now solid 19th place. Liz Van Howling for a 20th overall here. Solid little kick to the line for Next Esports presented by it in short. As uh, we can see, though, the overall board here really changing up. Big place changes now as Lucy Collins now makes her way to the top at 5 watts per kilogram for that Wahoo LeCole team. It's going to be Tiffany Penner behind her. The Canadian, uh, this is a really also a, a rider who has popped up on the radar recently. Um, Lucy Collins for Wahoo LeCole, but Tiffany Penner right behind her. She is just always out there digging so much for these results out here. I've been really excited to see where this rider is going to go in the future with Penner. 
Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. And it's like what I was just saying a, a few moments ago, Nathan. We've started to see names who were, you know, in, in the races, they were on the radar, but some who have really made a big step up. They've stamped their authority and they've really made a big, big impression. And I think, you know, now they've had a taste of racing at the very top level of esports. Let's not forget everyone who's been racing over the last three weekends and, and including here tonight in the climb. It's the world's best esports riders. And so, you know, it's we're watching the best. And so going into any other race and, and seeing these other riders who are showing their, their potential and also their attributes across different types and styles of racing, I think we're in for a real treat into the future. 100%. And as that is part of the motivation here, is it that you get to race against the best in the world, push yourself to be the best you possibly can because of the groups that you are amongst. Uh, absolutely amazing races. We see the top 20 to 25 finishing up there. Let's head back to the studio to get some post-race analysis. Nathan and Hannah, thank you so much. Uh, John, wow. Um, just like we said last night, in, a, in one way, the racing and, and what we've just witnessed on the Alpha Zwift is a wonderful um, kind of uh, advert for the, the sport of Zwift racing and the gaming the game of Zwift racing, but also it's just so brutal. Particularly those picture-in-pictures, it looked absolutely horrific, didn't it? Yeah, you can see there really is nowhere to hide at all, and you have to say, <clears throat> Eileen Gardner, what a performance, all the way pretty much from the bottom. Yep. She's gone from bottom to top as fast as she could. She's done the effort perfectly, to be honest, and a deserved winner of today's race. Yeah, a British winner too. We are not gloating about that, but she confirmed her billing as, well, IRL, European uh, climbing champion from those first inaugural championships IRL last year. Well, she is our climb champion too in the Swift game. She sits well atop that final podium for the, uh, the Climb Championship, having just entered that round. Striking out early, as John said, not waiting for any tactics to unfold, just getting on with laying down the watts. Emma Belforth, John, my revelation of this Zwift Games. I think she's been absolutely stunning. She stunned everyone in the, in the opening um, sprint championships by winning the first two rounds as well. And she's backed that up, showing utter consistency and climbing brilliance today, really. When you look at the gap, only 135 behind Illy Gardner, who is the current European champion IRL. So Emma Belforth is, uh, is now a massive player in Zwift racing. Yeah, and of course, it's easy to with the ride that Gardner did, it's easy to forget, but Belforth, again, timed it perfectly. All these riders, we saw how hard it was. It quite a big group early on, on the early slopes through those first few hairpins, but soon it stretched out, thanks to Gardner's really big acceleration, but all the way down, Gera, again, did everything she could. I don't think, the one good thing about Alpe de Zwift and that effort, there is really nowhere to hide. There's tactics of getting where you need to be and making the move, but in the end, it's whoever is the, whoever has the best legs and whatever you've got. Yeah, and let's not forget as well, just while we're looking at that first page, Catherine Furrer, Kristin Kulczynski together, teammates on Zwift, of course, and today, Kristin Kulczynski dropping back to pace Catherine Furrer up. We'll come back to that, of course. So I think we might be able to grab a word in, in a while with our... Um, yellow jersey wearer. Should we have a look beyond Mika Sodastrom, who had a very solid ride in 10th place to 11th and beyond? See those who... We talked about Sondrine Etienne being a big favourite today. It's nearly seven minutes down. I, I have to say it's a bit of a disappointment from the French woman, considering how dominant she was on this course in the, the Zwift Grand Prix. It might also illustrate, though, John, just how much the level has been lifted into these Zwift games as well, which is always something we wanted. Yeah, the Zwift games will be the biggest side of it, but of course, people's form come into a bit of illness maybe we don't we don't know exactly where everyone is at that moment in time but yeah across all these women then you'll go down to 18th charlotte coldclough again one of those riders consistently in the zwift world we've seen her racing quite a lot but she's on the way up slowly but surely hmm. Right, I'm pleased to say we can now have a chat with Eileen Gardner, our individual climb champion. Eileen, congratulations. Thank you. How, you, 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 look, you look completely relaxed now. Have you had a chance to catch your breath? 
no, I think it's going to take a while for my heart rate to settle. <laughs> well, it's funny you should say that because John Mould and I in here in the studio, we were watching your stats through, throughout, and I don't think your heart rate dropped below 197 or something. Okay. We were getting a bit worried for you. Do you know what your maximum heart rate is? Uh, it must I think be. 209 maybe, but right. I've always had just one that gets weirdly high, but... Um, yeah, it was a bit of adrenaline. It was up there really quickly. Fantastic. What, uh, well, for, for a start, our congratulations on being our climb champion here in the Zwift Games. It looked to us from quite early on that as soon as the slope started to bite, you looked like you just wanted to get on with it. No tactics, don't wait for anyone else. Was that, was that your thinking? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of my dream race, just the long effort, full gas, full send it from the start. Um, and especially as the steepest gradients come early on. I was hoping to avoid any potential early yeah, tactics from other teams and just try and get a gap and hold on. But of course, you never know how it's going to go. Um, no. It's a bit of a hard way to ride it, but it's kind of the most comfortable effort for me, I think. Can I, Ali, can I ask, how were you pacing yourself then? Because once you're out there by yourself, what were you, you were you looking at your numbers or are you even looking around? You? And, and, and on that, what if you were looking around you, did you see the Yeti? <laughs> Sorry, no, I, I didn't. <laughs> I think sweat was obscuring my vision. I couldn't really see much. Uh, yeah, I, I tried not to look at power too much, just kind of settle into that power, like the feeling of being right on the limit without going over too much. Um, but yeah, once mm. I'd committed, I just had to try and hold on, basically. <laughs> Just one more question for me, and I know John's got something he wants to come to on as well, but how would you describe your... I mean, you're a fascinating athlete, Ali, if you don't mind me saying, because you, you do a lot of different things as well. Uh, we talked to, I'd mentioned about you being the European climb champion from that, that IRL championship last year. You're obviously an incredible Zwifter too. Where, where, is your, where is Ali Gardner's career as a cyclist going? Where do you see yourself? And what kind of rider would you describe yourself as? Yeah, it's a bit difficult. I'm definitely just climbing. I just absolutely love climbing. And I wish that there was kind of more of a discipline, like an actual sector of the sport around it. Like we saw European Hill Climb Champs last year. It'd be great if there was kind of more races like that because considering it's such like a big part of road cycling, it's, yeah. Yeah, it'd be great to see it kind of rise and see more mountain. And well, there's definitely an argument for it after, after today's race. So, um, yeah, for me, hats off. It was brilliant. And you're exactly right doing, just holding that effort and having that feeling on the limit. And it's amazing sometimes you can actually go above what you think you can do, especially when it's right, when it's in race day, you're in that mode. So, yeah, it's exactly what you needed to do. And yeah, hats off. A, a brilliant win. Yeah. Thanks very much. Ali, just one last thing from me. I always ask this of any of our interviewees straight after the race. Um, can we ask where in the world you are? Uh, what the weather's like outside and, and what time of day it is. I think you might be in the same country as us, possibly, but where yeah, are you? I'm in Cardiff in Wales. Um, it's been raining all week, I think, <laughs> and it's 7.30ish, I think, p.m., so an evening race. Not you're, late, you're, so. you're in Wales and it's raining. This is no news break, as John can <laughs> confirm. <laughs> this, is, this is not news. <laughs> Ali, congratulations on being our climb champion of the Zwift Games 2024 and all the very best for this season from us here at Zwift as well. Thanks very much. Take care. Ah, oh, do you know what? She seemed quite, she seemed like everything had calmed down. That 198 BPM that she held for what, like 40 minutes, John? <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, it's amazing how fast you can recover and you know, I give an interview as well. Yeah. Really, yeah, had recovered in a way. Might have hurt a little bit more than she let on, but uh, yeah, brilliant ride from Gardner. So that's our uh, climb champion. Of course, this is the final round and we are really now starting to think about the overall. Shall we have a look at that top 10 for the Wahoo Championship overall in the Swift Games? Catherine Führer. Uh, what a comeback she had today, John. Bearing in mind that, and, and all the viewers at home will have seen this, the screen on the left-hand side of the screen, uh, Gabby Guerra, bumping up there as well uh, and, and battling with Lou Bates for that lead. But Catherine Führer just seemed to pace the climb absolutely spot on for that final golden jersey, didn't she? She did exactly what she needed to do. She didn't go into the red and follow those climbers that were a lot stronger than her. She was able to pace it perfectly. If, and that's exactly what she needed to do. So team tactics all came into it, everything like that. So it was a brilliant ride from Führer and her teammate then Kolchinski, a tactical genius move. We thought there was a technical problem, but 
she actually waited for her teammate, came back, paced her where she could. And it might have only been one point if she did that, but it ended up winning by two points clear to Gera. Yeah. So from that sprint win and the epic win, we were kind of thinking, well, maybe she won't have the legs on the climb, but she's pulled it off and it's been a brilliant and a deserved winner, actually. Absolutely. Uh, and in the end, look how close it was as well. Just the two points between herself and Gabby Guerra as well. Big shout out to the Brazilian woman. Uh, brilliant ride by her again on the Alp. And, uh, and a right battle as well from Lou Bates as well. A fantastic ding dong between those two, although they probably wouldn't have known it throughout, but constantly battling for that lead as well. But uh, watching Catherine Fuhrer uh, just gradually winding her way back in up there, um, what a performance. Also, great performance by the two um, Swedish women in there, Mika Soderstrom and Emma Belforth. Emma Belforth, once again, so strong on this, uh, this final climb to finish overall in fifth. I have to say, John, that um, Kolchinski moment where we saw her watts, I, I was just watching on the screen, I saw her go about 100 watts, 121 watts, 80 watts, I was thinking, hang on, there's something going on here, and then stopping. And I must admit, I thought, I thought she'd had some kind of problem or something, but quite quickly, you, you hooked onto what was going on. Yeah, well, it was one of those things you didn't think, it, you, you always think the worst. When you see yeah. zero come on, it's the same as a puncture in real life. You, you're almost disappointed and gutted, but it wasn't. It was tactical genius, and it's come off with a, with a brilliant win, so you, you can't say anything bad about that, it was a brilliant move. Absolutely. I think we are now ready to join our Wahoo overall champion of these Swift Games for the women, Catherine Fuhrer. Catherine, congratulations, yeah. you're our overall Thank champion. You. <laughs> Have Woo! you caught your breath? Have you caught your breath? Yeah, yeah. I'm looking not so chill like you leave off. Yeah, <laughs> I, could, I could get some, some rest, yeah. Honestly, it was it was absolutely brilliant. John and I were sat here in the studio, getting having the luxury of not commentating, just watching that happen, and just gradually watching you steadily pacing it out. We were seeing Gabby Guerra and Lou Bates battling for the overall, and you were just working your way up that overall leaderboard. It was almost the the perfectly, well, I think it was the perfectly measured ride for you to win that championship. Well done. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I knew I, I have uh, no chance against uh, the super climbers like Ili. I mean, she is just phenomenal. She is the queen of the mountains in Europe and everywhere else, I think. <laughs> so I, I knew I need to pace myself up there. I knew exactly what I could push. And uh, I knew that I can't um, blow myself up in the first couple of turns, uh, which were the steepest. So I just paced myself up. And at the end, I had such great teamwork. Kristen paced me up and it was just crazy, crazy good to finish like this together. Catherine, can I just ask you on that? At what point did you know that Kristen was doing that? You don't have to divulge your team tactics to us, but did, were you aware that she was going to wait for you at that point? How did you know? Yeah, we obviously have a, we are connected with the headset, so we know everything right. from each other. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, it, it may, we were a little bit surprised in the studio. We saw her watch dropping off and then John very quickly latched on to what was happening. Um, Catherine, one more question for me. Um, you won the sprint championship and you won the epic championship and you've, you finished uh, fifth here in the climb championship. Which was your favorite round? <laughs> the climb? No, <laughs> kidding. Uh, uh, it was definitely the spring championship. Even though I really also like the, the epic, but uh, the spring championship is just uh, so much more interesting. Uh, and so I would choose the spring. And w uh, what are you going to do with that Wahoo gold kicker bike as well? What a, what a place, where are you going to put that? You're obviously yeah, thinking Yeah, I have already a spot. Uh, it's just next to me here. It's a total empty spot, so um, it will come just here. Yeah, it was meant to be. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm yeah. uh, really looking forward to it. <laughs> so I probably don't have any gear problems no more. <laughs> Catherine, one more thing. What else? What's your next thing happening this year? What are you looking forward to this season? Maybe in the world of Zwift or IRL, what have you got coming up? Yeah, a uh, big goal for me is what? Uh, actually, Swift Games is was is was the perfect preparation for it. Uh, this is the biggest goal for me, and I will go all, all in for this. 
Well, we hope you have a fantastic season and congratulations on being our inaugural winner of the Zwift Games. Catherine Fura, very well done. Thanks. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Let's have a look. Uh, there it is confirmed for us. The Swiss rider, Catherine Führer, as our champion. She gets that, uh, oh, yet another gold uh, Zeb1 bike in game, should she choose to use it. And crucially, she gets one of those gold Wahoo kicker bikes and all that money too, let's not forget. As well as all the prestige that comes with being the inaugural, not just any old Zwift Games champion. Next year we'll have our next one, I'm sure, but uh, the inaugural champion is really something quite special, John, isn't it? Yeah. Um, should we get the thoughts of uh, Nathan and Martin as well? Guys, um, what a brutal way to finish. Um, did it catch, when we saw Christian Kukinci's um, watts drop to zero, did it catch you off guard, Nathan? It caught me right off guard. I was getting really worried. I thought we might have another Jason Osborne moment. No, I think you could see this all playing out uh, in front of you. And Martin, I want to get your thoughts uh, about that because coming into this, all the teams and all the riders would make a plan for each and every situation. And with DSs in your ear, these kinds of things, they just play out exactly, it played out exactly the way that Team uh, Virginia's Blue Ridge 2024 would have done. Either Kristen takes this down or she paces fur to the top, isn't it? That not that kind of how you saw this playing out, Martin? Yeah, I think they prepared for that case. So they, they went into it with two options. So they said, let's play both cards first. And they really, I think they talked about it beforehand. And then when, when Kirsten knew she couldn't get that top three, she immediately jumped onto that team tank. 100%. And, you know, Catherine really set herself up to be in this position. And then essentially over the last weeks, probably was thinking, how do I get to the top of that Alp the Zwift as fast as I possibly can? And it had been training and set up specifically just for this, Martin. I mean, you know what it's like to try and take down an Alp the Zwift at this kind of a level. It's a ton of preparation that goes into this, not to mention the setup of having to win the first two races as well. Yeah, it's. It's super hard to prepare for a climbing race like this. You need to have everything on point. Your form needs to be on point. Your weight needs to be on point and everything. And she did absolutely the best she could in the two races before she won them. That's all she could, but she knew the climb was her weakness, so to say. And yeah, she, she played it played it perfectly. She paced it from the bottom. She had her plan, she sticked to it. Then she had Kirsten help her. And yeah, so she did a really great race. Yeah, and just a big mention, obviously, to Illy Gardner taking down the final race. A huge effort for her and a massive time to, for everybody to be shooting for out there to chase the best climber we've seen out on Zwift in quite a while. So big congratulations to Illy Gardner as well. Let's head back to the studio to close out today. Well, for the last time, big thank you to Nathan Guerra and also to Martin for joining us today as well. But now, for the real moment of truth, we talked about the overall championship, but I wonder how our predictions have stacked up against each other. Come on. Ah. Well, um, as we thought they might, Nathan does know his stuff. And uh, so his prediction, Gabby Guerra finishing, uh, of course, so close to the overall win in second place as well. I'm quite happy with myself, though. Lou Bates has been extremely consistent, so I finish in second place, John. Yeah, it was a good... Good battle there between Absolutely. between you and Nathan, so you can't really take anything there. Matt Stevens, of course, picking Kolchinski. It's been a nice, interesting. The amount of people we've we've spoke about and <clears throat> yeah, bit of fun. But he didn't win this time unless no, unless no, we... John. I tell you what, I would like to point out: you finished last, my friend. <laughs> oh, did I? Are you aware? I Just I was, to be clear, I, sorry, did you not hear me? You finished last, John. I, I think Mold. I think the screens. No, no, I can't see <laughs> no, the screen. No, I think we can all see it for ourselves. Oh, okay, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> I saw the Yeti, but I didn't see that. Yeah, we did. We both saw the Yeti. I can confirm that for you on camera. We were nearly knocked off our seats. Um, yes, we did. Did you? That's the question. Put it in the comments below if you did. And, and if you did, at what point of the course was it on? So we know you're not making it up. We know. Well, that concludes the Zwift Games 2024, the inaugural Zwift Games. Six championships spread across three weekends and an absolutely stacked lineup of elite racers from across the world of cycling. Freddie Ovette yesterday gave us a race he'll never forget as he won our men's overall championships. And Catherine Fuhrer 
Incredible consistency made her emerge as the leader of our women's overall today. Just tonight, of course. Don't forget that the Zwift Games is actually in the community series is continuing throughout the month of March and for the next two weeks you'll have a chance to race any of the stages you missed. You might even catch John and I doing it as well. In fact, I have. During that little break there, I actually entered one tomorrow morning. So I'll be there, John. Will you? Uh, Tuesday, I think. I'll hold you to that, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> until the end of today, you all can still ride that climb race for yourself. So hopefully you've picked up some tips and tricks from the Elite Zwifters. So please jump on and give it a try. And if you've seen for yourself, it is some of the most fun you can have on a bike. And fun. when you do it, you can descend all the way down as well. Yeah. And you go fast. <clears throat> as we said last night, this is very much type two fun, this climb <laughs> championship. When you get to the top. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. Well, listen, a big thank you to absolutely everyone who's made this possible, to the racers primarily who gave us the action, but also to the experts, the commentary teams we've had guiding us through the last through three weeks, to the production team, the broadcast teams here in London, the production team in Edinburgh as well, who packaged this all up for you to watch. And our sponsors, of course, Wahoo, Adidas, and Oakleaf supporting the inaugural Zwift Games. I've been Jez Cox, and this chap is John Mould. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Right on.